Hey, what's up? It's another review, and this is going to be on. Just get right into it. The Ferrer Le Mans Field Watch. Uh, this is from Ferrer Universal. It's a British company. Um, it has Swiss-made watches, and they are pretty much known for uh, their unique and original designs, and definitely uh, their use of color combinations. Generally, something very interesting, like bright. Uh, vibrant colors, not always, but I think overall their general color palette and combinations is is uh, unique to say the less for the most part. Um, and they're just very something really attractive about what they do. And uh, they make some solid watches. I have the Ferrer, uh, the Chronograph, the Bernina. You might have seen um, me post that before, and I don't believe I've done a review on that yet. And I've had that one longer, but. I need to get this one out uh, right now, so we're going to get right into it. Um, so this is the um, this is their fuel watch, and so they came in three different models. Uh, they're named after different ones, but uh, different places, I believe, or parks. And uh, this one is Le Mans, L O M O N D, and uh, there's another one that has a green dial, and I think there's one other variant, but I can't remember the color. <laughs> Wait, but the other one, and they're what Ferrer does uh, that's pretty uh, unique too is not only do they have different colors, but they're not just a recoloration. There's usually more to it, like they will have a different dial set. Like the green one has a full set of uh, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers all the way around. More, I guess, like a traditional field watch in that sense. Um, or the other one, like... Uh, what else am I to do? They might have a different, possibly a different, slightly different handset as well. Just some of the details are different uh, in the dial. So then you get, it makes it kind of hard because they all have their merits and, and really good looks to them. Turn down the exposure just a tad. It looks a little bright. So um, this is, uh, we'll get into specs. Uh, it is 38.5 millimeters. And... Uh, it's 12.3 millimeters thick. And this is a flat sapphire crystal. Uh, 20 millimeter lugs. Lug to lug is actually pretty short, 45 millimeters. But they say if you count the, from the pins themselves, which can make a difference if you're doing it on the strap or the NATO, because I think it'll bring it in a little bit closer. The uh, See where it hinges, it can only drop down so much. It's not bad at all. It's actually pretty good that it drops down this way, but it's 42 millimeters pin to pin, but 45 already just from lug to lug. And even if it does come out slightly right there, it's, it's really nothing. And they get also, um, what else is there? This has a uh, Salida SW221 1. Uh, it has 26 joules, beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour, and uh, that's four, I think that's that's right, per hour, <laughs> uh, but it's a four hertz movement, and uh, so it's got a pretty decent sweep on it, well, actually, and it's got a screw down crown, integrated uh, crown guard, it's very subtle, but it just ever so slightly comes out, just to protect the crown a bit, which you might be able to see there. It's a screw down crown, six millimeters, uh, and uh, it's a, it's signed with a bronze cap that's uh, got their Vera logo in here. And as you can see, it's it's developed some patina, which is what you want. This is great if you wanted to dabble in bronze but not commit to a full, necessarily the full, uh, you know, case and everything. Uh, but you would like you like that tone, but just not too much. This is a kind of a cool way just to get some of that and just watch it develop without committing to the whole watch. And so the first position is um, it should be hand wind, but I'd like to double check. Sometimes some watches, if you don't pull it out all the way, if it's in the red hour, uh, red zone between 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. and then you start thinking you're going to hand wind it, but it actually is in the date position. You do not want to move your date while it's in that, that time period, right? So, uh, and you can see here too, it is, come on, focus, focus, okay. It is a uh, pointer date, which is pretty cool too. Um, generally, you associate something like this, I would say, 
somewhat mainstream, at least in the watch world, uh, for enthusiasts, you think of Aura's pointer date, big, it's a big crown pointer date, um, which is a nice watch, but it costs, uh, quite a bit more. This is around eight, nine hundred dollars, somewhere around there, uh, and the Aura's will be, I think, closer to around two thousand or so, um, but yeah. And, uh, yeah, so this is in there, so hand winding is very smooth. Let's get the... Let's just get the hand, seconds hands going and it's got a nice matte blue dial navy dial you can see it's got this ever so fine bit of uh, texturing on it uh, that looks pretty nice it has super luminova uh great uh it's a great day <laughs> and it's pretty unique um even this what you see here they call this a light orange but to my eyes it looks more yellow i consider this that's what gravitated me to this. I like primary colors, and so this is atypical for many fuel watches. I think most people, when they think of fuel watches, they think of something more military, like Hamilton fuel, khaki field, or Venris, um, even Seiko. If you consider the Seiko Five Line, the real simple uh, twelve through eleven, you know, it's three hander, not even a date necessarily, too. Uh, for a field watch and uh, yeah and then usually just black on silver right or maybe something earthy like khaki colored or green or, or brown or something like that you want it to look like a field like you're going to camouflage yourself in the field with one of those uh, but I went the opposite direction because uh, I've seen so many of those it's kind of boring to me <laughs> and yeah those are not supposed to be exciting they are supposed to be basic field and they just do their job I get it but uh yeah i feel like everyone has something like that and i wanted to go with something different if you're going to go with a fuel watch and i wanted some a little bit of color and i like primary colors particularly the red blue yellow and that's what you got here and if you watch my channel long enough and you go back to my seiko mod my firefly mod which is a i had it all uh black cerakoted uh, skx uh, made into like a field watch i actually use red yellow and blue as my accent colors on the hands as well to denote priority of like the information like seconds are very critical so i've made that red next would be minutes so i made that yellow and then last would be hour hand and i made that uh got a blue tip and anyways that's something you can look back in my way it's been several years now uh anyways so get into it and uh what else is there uh, most of the print is white although this set is off white but it looks pretty much straight up white to me um that the dates around the outside are actually, they call it sky blue, so it's like a light blue. And they say that the date was, goes from 28 to 31. It's, I know, sorry, it's kind of in the shadows there. 28 to 31. Let's see if I can put my light a little bit more forward, or maybe I move it back more. Uh, anyways, um, I'm down. Yeah, it's not going to help. Yeah, the, right over here, you can see the dates. They said it's burnt orange, but to me, I think it just looks red, like the handset. But it's a reminder for uh, you uh, towards the end of the month, when you think about it, to, uh, you might want to double check that when it's in that red zone and maybe do a quick um, date advance. So if it's like February, probably on the 28th, and the next day will not be the 29th, it'll be the 1st. So you might want to jump it then. Or uh, again, if it's the last day, it's the 30th. If it jump, is, lands on the 31st, then you might want to, uh, you will want to ad advance the date to the next, you know, number. It's not going to be 31st, right? It's going to be the 1st. That's all that is. That's why it's changed colors up there. Just as a little friendly reminder to check your end of the month or beginning of the month. Uh, if it's really, you know, the day after that date. And that's basically what that's all about. Uh, very simple, clean printing for universal automatic 200 meters, you know, 600, uh, 50, 56. Um, people write this up in all sorts of ways, sometimes 666, right? Double diver. And so, um, anyways, it's going. Uh, it's, there's no display case back. Um, there is... Um, yeah, so it's got this design back here, and uh, it's screwed in, screwed down with these four screws, but it still has 200 meters of resistance. 
and uh, what I was going to say, I guess let's go ahead and hack this. And I'm just going to advance it so then I can change the date for you and make sure I'm out of the red zone. Or, you know what, when I do this, I'll do it one more time around real quickly and show you the date jump as it would pass midnight. There, you see that? Just jumped. And that's it. And so, very easy to read. Something different than just a date window. Some people like that, just that extra hand, kind of like maybe, so I'm in the 6 a.m. now, so it's safe for me so I can adjust. Again, go like this, I think it's this direction. Just like that. And then you set your date. Just like that. So if you like, a, sometimes you have no use for a GMT, but you just like that look, maybe with that extra hand, just, says, just give it something extra on the dial. This kind of has that same effect uh, with a pointer date, right? And so what you're going to do is just screw it down. But I usually, I usually like to there, I feel like the thread cleared before I advance it to actually lock it down. Because I don't want to risk cross-threading uh, just just my worry and pet peeve so that's a ritual that I, I usually do unless the watch is made particularly well where it just engages and locks down without ever cross-threading there are some really well done crowns like that so um, in that case if I know that watch has that then I can just safely just go straight into screwing it down and not worry about back you know feeling it to it the thread's kind of clear, you can feel it just kind of drop, and then you know it's in the right position to engage, to advance forward and screw it down. Anyways, back to the watch. Um, uh, what I was going to say, it's just a 316 marine gray stainless steel. Um, it talks about the crown guards. Um, it comes with three options, uh, actually, when you get this, which is, makes it a pretty good value. You know, you don't just get the one option or you have to pick sometimes you have to pick one of whatever options there are this came uh on a with a bracelet a leather strap and i'll show you that in a second and a hormone leather strap that is as well a brown one and a dark or blue or navy um nato strap and um gives you all the hardware too so this or the extra uh links i removed this would be for the bracelet and it is a butterfly bracelet and uh well i'll show you down my wrist, I got a Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 300. This is the new one with a new like catcher cage, which is even thinner. Uh, a lot of refinements. The bracelet is, I'm not sure if it had the quick release before, but if it did, what's new is that they have screw pins as well as uh, it tapers down more from 20 down to 15 or 16 or so, right around there. Um, has, a, of course, the toolless adjust here. Uh, which is cool and uh, yeah overall it's a really good watch um, it's just uh, it's very well made very nice another <laughs> not maybe coincidentally i'm wearing it today uh british brand also swiss made and so this is my wrists are just under seven inches and this is on the stainless steel and it's kind of like a jubilee style bracelet uh, but unlike most of those, I like the fact that this is completely brushed. It keeps it more tooly. I always prefer that. I had that on my Steinhardt uh, Ocean 39 GMT, the, the Batman looking one. Not the new one that they have. This looks more like a, a Rolex one. Uh, the previous one, they had a little bit more of an original design too. Uh, but anyways, talking about this. So, the point, but... It's relatively low profile. You got these links just small enough to short so that you should be able to get a dial in a pretty decent fit. They're not super long, so you, you know you can you might end up with an in-between space that doesn't quite work. You should get something pretty good here. I do not believe they are screw. Nope, you see the arrows here. So I think it's a pin and collar. Or maybe it's just a friction pin. I forget. <laughs> this is I can't even tell from this. 
it's probably a friction pin. Yeah, I can tell. Just from looking at that, you can see it was split and it goes all the way through. But you know, those are actually pretty easy to, to size. You just take a good tool to either push it through, or I, I mean, I always use a, like some sort of a pin and hammer and just, just quick couple taps there. It's actually quite easy to size. I don't know why people maybe demand screws. I mean, it seems more premium, I suppose, but this is a nice bracelet. It's pretty solid. It has some flex to it, which is good because you don't want it too stiff, but does it sound jangly? Not like an SK. I, I don't know. I mean, it does feel solid. And it's nicely milled. Maybe the, the edges could be a little bit smoothed over, but I don't find them like, they're not like, I feel like they're hurting me. Like, oh my God, it's too sharp. No, no, no. They're just very, you know, cleanly cut, I guess I would call it. And it has have a quick release system right back here. Come on. You see the, these two guys here. And um, so it makes strap changes easy. So we'll show you the, you know, did you get a good look of my wrist? Three. So it's less than seven inches. About seven inches. I say 6.9 or so. Focus, focus, focus. All right, there we go. And wears quite well. And I actually, because the bezel is kind of on a thicker side and the dial push goes in a bit, it actually might look and wear a bit smaller even than a 38.5 might suggest. And that's the thing about this. I think some people comment about this bezel being maybe a little bit thick or big for this watch, but I don't know. I don't think so. I, I would say it's its own unique look. I mean, other ones that are smooth bezel, they can be very similar to other ones that are basically the same proportions. It's just not necessarily a bad thing, but it just looks like kind of like the other ones. So in that sense, this kind of has its own thing. And I kind of think it makes it look more rugged. You know, like it's just more metal. It's just like, like it's more armored or something. And so I don't know. It feels, I feel more confident about it. So this is the packaging that the watch comes in itself. And you, they get, it was shipped with both of these. They couldn't fit the bracelet all into here. They just put this, I think, on the stock leather strap first. And then, um, let's see, you get here a cleaning cloth, branded fur. I'm pretty sure there is a warranty thing in here with the card. Yep. So there's all that. Um, and here is the NATO. And oops, I don't want to lose. I should tape this to this before I lose it. But, um, and that reminds me, I should take out these um, pieces because this watch I see just sold. <laughs> um, and it's not because I don't like the watch. Sewn it. I do like this watch. It's just that it's always been a struggle for me to stick with any kind of um, field watch. The, I just don't gravitate towards field watch as much. And I decided to give this one a try. Uh, but it just doesn't seem to be my thing. So I am trying to remove this, but I guess I'll take that out later. So, uh, I don't need to waste my video time. And here's a Halloween leather strap. Only wore it once, really. I pretty much wore only like this once, and this once, and then mostly kept it in the bracelet. But um, yeah, uh, it's good quality. I kind of showed in the video how I kind of broke it in because it was a bit stiff, but then now it's got some curvature and more pliability. And I think it'll wear much more comfortable than how it is straight off the box. Quick release pins on these. So very easy to put right in. And uh, I am thinking maybe I should do that. And they give you, again, the, uh, you know, even the Senado, they give you quick release spring bars uh, so that you can make the transition onto these. Good, without all, basically no tools if you just stick with their kit, right? So I'm gonna put these aside for now. And I'll just show you the, how easy it is to do a strap change. And I think these are numbered as well. They have a limit. I don't think they're not limited edition. 
but um, right back up here, I believe that's the number 288. And you can specify in the website, there's like a list of uh, numbers when you put an order in, um, which one are taken and which one are still available. And I picked this one out because 288 for Chinese people, uh, which I am, <laughs> or Asian cultures in general is a good number. Um, good luck number. So all you do is just pinch these two together. Let me show it for maybe this angle here. Yep, there you go. Just like that. Come on, focus, focus. And then like that. Just comes right up. And then all you do is the same. You only have a single piece here that you need to worry about. So um you know, little bolt thing, you don't have to push both sides. Get it in, feel it out, hear it snap, give it a tug, wiggle, make sure it's in. You're good on that side. And then put this one on here. I usually go that side in first obviously and then you pull the side that you can that pulls down second or last and then we go tug tug good to go and you go this is how it looks like on the Halloween leather it's kind of thick but I think it matches it should be like a rugged looking uh, design or style and I'm not going to put it on the NATO right now because I don't want to switch it again uh, look at my uh, one of my watch you strapping videos I, sh that, I believe that was the first strap option i actually put on this watch uh, to show it off and to give it the first uh my first day of test running it i mean i don't i had to go to work so i didn't want to put on leather because i clean all my watches and so uh even to the, as much as i can the bracelet or strap and i can't wash leather obviously so um i put it on this but i wore this like once or something on the weekend which I don't have to worry about because I don't get nearly as messy or dirty uh, at home thankfully and that's how it looks like and it's a nice look changes it up a bit I guess I don't know if it would say it's necessarily more casual it's definitely not dressier but well I don't know maybe you might consider that but it's a nice look it's comfy if you're going into winter time autumn fall all that um, I think this is a pretty good match you know something warm and leather since weather's getting cold anyways uh, some people like to be off of the bracelet and do something a little bit cozier like this or even some sort of fabric strap perhaps over metal or rubber because it's no longer summer and the buckles are signed on that um, as well as on here which is kind of neat because it comes together see and forms the uh, the uh, Fiera logo Kind of Star Trek looking, but anyways, and I believe the hardware on this is basically, well, this one is ever so slightly wider for some reason. Although they're both 20 millimeters, at least they should be. Actually, it's kind of weird. Well, no, it tapers down here, that's why. Okay, yeah, because the NATO is straight, so it is 20. <laughs> it better be. But the hardware seems, yeah, it is definitely a little bit wider because this goes 20 millimeters all the way through. Uh, but other than that, it's basically the same thing. Nice uh, mill, just not stamped. Uh, good hardware uh, for the keepers. Uh, good stitching on this. I believe it's basically wax sealed on the side. And it's got the, it just looks more good. And also because the bronze patina is and gives that kind of rustic look too. It's good for the uh, change of season when it gets into autumn or fall and all that. You know, I am keeping this on here because I need it. It would be better for me to ship it out like this. Okay. So, um, in conclusion, did I go over everything? Let's see. Uh, point of date. Colors, bronze, strap options, um, sapphire crystal, movement, yada yada. Yep, that's pretty much it. So, um, I think Vera in general offer a lot of cool watches. They, I think, more starting to be more known 
maybe for the chronograph, they just put out a new chronograph at the wind up in New York in October 2022. This happened just last week, I guess, last weekend or so. And that's where a lot of the micro brands and other brands uh, might announce some new stuff coming upcoming. And uh, they have to have a new, like, pretty nice monitor, uh, like a double sub register and a chronograph. Um, I'm pretty cool on mine, but uh, that one's pretty nice too. And they have a mono pusher and they have a flyback, but it's a quartz one, but it is at least a flyback uh, chronograph. And you know what? I think. Besides being a flyback chronograph, I think it's a, a split a split um, split timer too. So it has two second hands for, uh, to time things. Uh, yeah, again, it's quartz. But if you wanted to get that feature, which is generally pretty expensive to get a split timer in a mechanical or you know automatic offering, uh, to just at least have that functionality and look and all that, uh, that's not too bad. I think I forget what the price is, but I'm sure it's not as expensive as uh, a, a natural automatic or mechanical uh, you know rachapante. If, if I pronounced that right, I don't have the right tongue to say it, but the split timer. Um, I guess that's it. Um, I think this would be a great everyday watch, and if you want something that's in a smaller side, but it still has like a little extra presence to it because it's not it's not thick, but it has this kind of build to it that looks you know kind of boom. It's, like, it's, it's got some some impact there. It's not just like a smooth and very shallow bezel, and it's just you know the case is kind of hiding away, and it's all about the dial. It's you no know, the, the the emphasis is on the case too. And oh, by the way. This same, I believe the same case design is basically what they used in their divers that they have. Um, I forgot the, the model line for those divers, but basically they replaced the smooth bezel with a rotating one. And they have some pretty cool color ways for that diver as well. And they, and it does come on the same bracelet too, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't have all these st same strap options. If anything, I would imagine they would have lost the the leather strap because probably, I mean, you could put leathers on divers, but I don't think they would have accessorized it. Uh, I think it only comes with the NATO and the bracelet on that diver. Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. I'm sorry, <laughs> but look at their website and you'll see it. Um, but it's based off of the same case, so they, the straps are compatible if you wanted to, but and this, basically the dimensions are near identical. In fact, the diver is somehow actually a little bit thinner, um, but uh, not by much. It's like, like 1.1 millimeter or something like that. If even So, uh, I guess that's all I want to say. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, whatever, keep them civil, keep them <laughs> relevant. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, that's right. I wish we got Loom Shot. <laughs> um, so, this has an interesting glow. Let me, I got my black light. Let me turn this off. I'm going to have to boost the ISO a little bit so that it will actually show up better. Not that much. And let me turn off the background light. Okay, cheat a little bit. Well, this needs it. All right. Let's see that. So, uh, there you go. It's an interesting glow. Uh, the hands definitely. Let me move. Uh, let me move the minute hand out of the way so you can see the hour.
Okay, there we go. Trying to try this again. Hit the stop button by accident. So here we go. Uh, so this is. Um, let me see if I can adjust the white balance so it looks closer to what I'm seeing. I think it's something like that. Yeah. So, um, here it is. The hand for the hour, minute, and the seconds probably glow the brightest and the longest. And it's cool that you can see the numerals, but uh, definitely they're not as heavily as applied uh, to the uh, as the uh, handset. So, uh, they will probably fade out sooner than the handset. The handsets, I believe, from what, what I remember, they do tend to last uh, throughout the night. Of course, you know, everything goes down. It's a little bit dimmer, but uh, I think um, you definitely still be out of time. As with the numbers and the markings, um, they will probably go um, quite faint by the time it's like much later in the night. Uh, but if your eyes are adjusted enough, um, you could probably uh, make out. Oops. No. You could probably make out. Uh, the, the the time of day uh, anyways but yeah I, I would say that even the that's, that's just beautiful I would say that um, the hand the dial is not as saturated in color as the handset um, the handset definitely have a stronger greenish color I would say that the numbers and the, and the on the dial and everything seem actually a little bit borderline white. I would say, uh, though it looks starting to look pretty green in this in uh, my video here. It's just I don't know. I have no control over the uh, the color balance on this one for some reason, and I can't get the eyes any higher. So, and I can't get my speed any lower. So this is about it. <laughs> Anyways. Just wanted to show you how it looks like the loom shot before I close this out. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, I guess I'll catch you in the next one now. Thanks, bye.